This is a vlog where I'm going to talk about how to make a mathematics paper from start to finish. And uh, we are currently looking for a project at the moment which is about uh, quantum chaos. Um, we've been kind of like uh, looking into this project recently with uh, a mathematician from University of Bristol called Etienne Lemasson and also uh, a mathematician currently as a postdoc in University of Manchester called uh, Clifford Gilmore. So Etienne is an expert on quantum chaos, uh, on graphs and on their applications and connections to quantum chaos and manifolds. Uh, and Clifford has been doing like more this kind of linear chaos where you study dynamics of linear operators and uh, I've been more doing dynamics and recently been doing on these connections to quantum chaos as well. So, so the project that we want to consider at the moment is to understand what happens to LP norms of eigenfunctions of the Laplacian on compact hyperbolic surfaces when we change the size of the surface into larger and larger, for example, increase the genus or in our case we are increasing, for example, the injectivity radius of the, of the surface. So this may sound very like technical kind of question, but this is all motivated by some other papers that we have. So how do I begin this whole process of doing this paper? So commonly what I do in this situation, what I'm trying to do is the, the first step essentially is to look at the references, look at the other papers that have been done on this kind of setting. Okay, so what is really motivating me to do this specific project is actually this uh, recent article by Etienne Lemasson, and uh, so it's on here. So, so this article here, so it's on LP norms and eigenfunctions on regular graphs and on, on the sphere, uh, studies the upper bound for LP norms of eigenfunctions on the discrete Laplacian on regular graphs. So. So the situation is that at the moment we would like to do a kind of like a continuous analog of this problem. And uh, so why would we want to do this? So why, what's the motivation for this whole thing? Is that uh, so the continuous setting, you have plenty of other articles being done on this situation. So for example, these papers by uh, uh, Soge, so we here uh, did this on um, on Riemannian manifolds, and they proved a kind of like a dependence on the LP norm on the on on the eigenvalue. So if you take the LP norm of an eigenfunction of the Laplacian with certain eigenvalue lambda squared, for example, in here, then uh, you will have this dependence. And um, so, um, and then there are some like estimates on the kind of constants that you get on different values of p, which is uh, which had been estimated. And um, and in this paper by Etienne and uh, Shimon, so they study this similar problem on graphs, but on graphs the situation is slightly different because um, uh, in graphs, for example, the spectrum you don't get large eigenvalues because you consider a finite graph. But what they consider here is that you kind of change the graph to make it slightly bigger and bigger, which means that you get different more and more eigenvalues so that allows you to have a kind of like a dependency on the um, LP norm on the on the eigen on the eigenvalue so um, so this was the main main result of their paper is theorem 1.2 which connects the LP norm into the injectivity radius of the graph and the injective radius is a kind of like a quantity that describes the size of the graph in many ways how 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 close it is is into a three, and um, <clears throat> at the moment in our setting, what we are trying to consider is uh, is a hyperbolic surface. So, what would I start to do in this situation? So I'm trying to look at the connection between this. So what is the connection between this and the uh, and the hyperbolic surface? So it means uh, there seems to be almost no link when you're looking at it first. But the thing is that why we recently did a paper with, actually with Etienne, so let's go to his uh, uh, side. So you have this um, uh, quantum mercodicity and Benjamin Sharm conversion of hyperbolic surfaces, which we did uh, a couple of uh, years ago. 
Um, so in this article, we take some of the ideas from the graphs and approve a, like a quantum ergodicity theorem for hyperbolic surfaces. You know, like a similar analogous setting that you have some theorem on graphs that depends on the injectivity radius. And we take this into getting another result for for hyperbolic surfaces and use their corresponding injectivity radius there. And uh, my hope is now, okay, I'm starting this kind of like just to see what's going to happen, is to use these ideas that we have in this paper and just see what's going to happen. So, okay. Um, I'm really not sure, can I get into anything on this? So I'm just starting this and it's like a um, relatively daunting task. So, uh, so let's take a look. So the first thing I'm trying to do uh, is to have this like seeing if we can connect these two ideas. So, um, so I think the first, very first step that I'm trying to do is that I will read through this paper by Brooks and Lemasson and uh, try to see like what kind of ideas they do. Because I have a, I have an idea on what's going on in the continuous setting, and how the how does it link in the finite graph setting, and then we can try to see if we can create this similar link. Uh, I think I'll try to do a little bit of thinking myself about this uh, problem. So with this, I just go just to sit outside a little bit, uh, take my notepad, uh, pen, and just get on with it and see how how things go. So just try to have a, like a little bit of doodle of the ideas and do a little bit of planning what's going to happen next and hopefully this will turn out to be something interesting. So we'll see. Okay, that's all finished now. I had some thoughts about the problem and it's, uh, yeah, it seems to be quite difficult. I mean, there are some like... Uh, uh, directions I had a thought about but then I'm not really sure where to start so at this stage like usually when you start a paper or a project or something it's really like sketchy you're just trying different ideas you're trying to go to some different directions and I mean at uh, most of the ideas that you do don't really work at all you may have some like feelings okay yeah I will do something like this or I'll do something like that and uh, you try it you fail but then you hopefully learn something from those problems. So uh, I think for now, I think the best plan of action from here is to uh, just have this Skype meeting with Cliff uh, on Monday and just try to see where we can uh, go from this, this direction. So hopefully we can get some progress done by then. Okay, so I'm signing out now. Okay, see you.